I think the people of India have uh, uh, given a very decisive uh, verdict. It has rejected uh, the divisive, communal, uh, bigotry, and the pitch that uh, the Prime Minister has relied on, especially, you know, uh, Muslim, Mangal Sutra, uh, Mujra, you know, all those, all those M mutton and, and things like that. I think that this is this is decisive uh, rejection. One question I wanted to ask, uh, we may not know where it will all lead to. Before I go to that, there were many participants or stakeholders in this election, whether it's the political party, BJP, the RSS, uh, Modi and Shah, if we consider them to a unit, the voter, the media, etc. Who do you think would not, would would sleep the least, would, would have a very worried sleep, and according to you? And even the voter, there will be many voters who voted for BJP, and some may even get taunted for it, etc. Even though they have got many seats, who do you think would be the most worried today? You know, the, the, Venkat, the core constituency which BJP has been cultivating earlier, Jansang used to cultivate and Hindu Mahasabha used to cultivate, uh, the, the, um, the hardcore Hindutva constituency. You know, those people who have gone over to BJP for, uh, you know, the promise of development and uh, anti-corruption and, uh, you know, employment generation, that, that's a different thing that they have, uh, they, they could shift back and forth. But the core Hindutva constituency uh, will lose sleep. I think this is a resounding rejection of that. Okay. So, yeah. uh, while some are surprising, uh, for uh, for us, but I think some sound, we were already hearing some of them. Uh, for example, UP, we were hearing it, but we didn't know whether the vote share will go this much. We knew Karnataka will shift, it did not shift as much. For you, which were the biggest surprises, both maybe surprising in a positive way and maybe surprising in a negative way, what would you call from the results? Surprising in a negative way, uh, number one, I would start from Delhi. Delhi, I, I did not expect uh, BJP to, to, to do so well. And uh, surprising in a negative way also Karnataka. I expected uh, BJP to do worse than what it has uh, been able to do this time. And in a positive way, the surprise is that uh, UP. Because UP, I was expecting maybe 50, not more than 50 at all. That that was consistent, but it is, it's fallen below 50. That is... Uh, uh, a very positive surprise to me. And losing of Ayodhya itself, right? Like, like that seems like a... Of course, you see, that, that is the loudest uh, message, you know, when, when I, I thought I, I would come to that. Uh, you see, the rejection of uh, um, uh, weaponizing Ram, weaponizing religion, uh, pitching the entire uh, uh, election uh, as a, a Hindutva endorsement, Hindu supremacist endorsement. That is the main takeaway from this election. If you look at it, the Faisabad uh, verdict and of course the UP verdict and all that. You see, for instance, if you look at uh, the BJP's gains in uh, Andhra Pradesh, actually the, I mean, it, it's, it's a mistake to take that as an endorsement of BJP. It was an anti-incumbency uh, vote against Jagan Mohan Reddy's government. And uh, BJP happened to be the, the right alliance. Right. Had they maintained the alliance that they used to be, they used to be very close to Jagan Mohan Reddy's YSRCP. Had they gone along with them, they would have drawn a blank. Correct, correct. And and I would have wanted you to analyze a little bit more on Telangana and Andhra. Uh, you've already done the Andhra. You They were below Nota. So you think this is a contextual alliance you had called it uh, before. Yes, yes. And that is your real alliance. Uh, you see, uh, in Telangana, what happened, the BRS has done very poorly. So the contest, therefore, became Congress versus, you know, non-Congress. So when BJP, BRS has almost disappeared, so the anti-Congress uh, vote or non-Congress vote necessarily went to the BJP skitty. Hmm. That is the, had, had BG, BRS has, has had uh, BRS done a little better, 
polling, say, 30, 40, a thousand votes more in each of the constituencies, uh, uh, BJP would have been in a very, very troubled spot. And the fact that they seem to have come uh, to take some place in Kerala, where I do hear that they have the maximum number of RSS Shaka, how do you read that? Uh, you know, uh, they, they, they made it after a long time. In fact, you see, RSS has been uh, concentrating in Kerala, on Kerala, um, since I think 1930s, 1936 and you know, onwards. Um, but ultimately, they, they 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 did that, and of course, you know, they also had to resort to uh, or take recourse to some kind of a glamour of a of a of a film star. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. So and uh, then of course they. They they also try to woo the Muslim community. I mean, sorry, the the the, the Christian community. Uh, you know, by by uh, promising them uh, the rubber uh, uh, prices, the procurement prices, and things like that, support price and things like that. So it, these are the little little things that have uh, added. And when it became a triangular context, that con contest probably that also benefited the BJP. Yeah. And was it some sort of incumbency to left to like because left has left was thought to be not doing well and did those votes go? I always get surprised if the left vote goes to BJP, but we have seen that in Bengal. So, so uh, uh, Venkat, let's be very very cautious about it here. The rest of the constituencies in Kerala, whether uh, left has some anti-incumbency or not, they all favored Congress. That's true. So why why was there a, a bit of an exception in uh, uh, in Trisur? Mm -hmm. So that needs to be studied. But you see, uh, quickly, if you want me to, uh, tear, uh, because they 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 made a lot of effort. They have concentrated all their forces in, in that particular constituency, and uh, they had to uh, you know bring in uh, 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 cine glamour also along with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would have been I would have been concerned. If the BJP had fielded, uh, you know, uh, very normal kind of a karikatta or a Swayam Sevak or somebody, and still made it, I would have been very concerned because that would have been an ideological vote. But this is not a purely ideological vote. Correct, correct. And and you've spoken about this ideological and contextual, and sometimes you have to pick that through the analysis. There's little more to do. Uh, there's also uh, I I somehow thought maybe. It will be Tejasvi who will do what ultimately Akhilesh did, uh, and it was surprising that uh, we, I, I at least thought that it would be at the cost of NDA, which is JDU. But JDU seemed to have survived. I was in fact thinking that we might be writing some sort of obituary of the two Janata Dal parties after the Lok Sabha election. But it seemed like I went wrong, and I'm very new to this, uh, you know, studying Indian politics. What is your take? Of course. They're not the Janta Dal from Karnataka. They have a different problem. But Janta Dal reemergence, Nitish being the Paltu Chacha is how this was called. What is your take on it that he survived this? This you know that's surprising. I think uh, the surprising. In fact, I was expecting uh, Tejasvi Yadav's party RJD to do well, um, and as you expected, uh, JDU to do badly. Um, but then that, that's a surprising thing. I, th I think we need to get some information from there and uh, see what went wrong. Uh, but then it is this, uh, Venkat, since uh, Nitish Kumar is not an ideological ally, um, probably there is an also an opportunity there. I mean, things would have been much easier and better if uh, uh, RJD had won those seats, won a large chunk of, uh, of the seats. That's a different thing. But then... Um, um, this needs to be studied. Okay. Uh, I my friends tell me when I when I spoke to them today after I get to know the kind of results that were that they were that they were that were coming out, they said you know uh, especially the women some of the programs of the Nitish government which uh, helped women they they remained grateful to him and you know they they favored him. That's the kind of uh, you know once once you once a person wins, once a party wins, you you can easily justify you know why uh, all these things have happened. Yeah. Uh, one question I had is that you've been following politics for a long time. Uh, 
I, I feel like in the recent past, it's it's been shown as an engineering exercise. As in, you can literally uh, get one combination here and there. So it's like an algebraic work, like doing one and there, and you can get that done. Uh, in some sense, this time, I felt that the people's issues cannot be engineered as much. They can be brought together to solidarity, cannot be. Do you have any opinion that this engineering thing, which was, I think was overstated, but do you have any opinion about how you, I mean, how you see this election or how you think about this whole engineering activity, which which is claimed in, you know, newspaper, media house a lot? You know, Venkat, uh, I've been following elections for a long time. Uh, what happens is that, you know, if a political leader is successful, then our media immediately says that, you know, he's a Chanakya, he knows how to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, tweak the combinations. And and once he loses or his party loses, they'll say he's good for nothing, you know. So it it is, you know, it's alternating between uh, um, idolizing somebody and, you know, writing them off, that kind of a thing. Uh, let's not get into that. But the point is this, you know, when when an election is closely fought, for several reasons, when it is closely fought, then you you can get into, you know, this caste and that subcaste and, you know, this uh, region, that region, this leader, that leader, you know, etc., etc. Et but when there is a overall trend which is emerging across the country, and in this this election is one election like that, then these things don't matter. Engineering doesn't matter at all. I'll tell you what you know. Uh, to me, to me, there are there are uh, some takeaways from this election. One, there is a very strong rejection of the kind of divisive politics that the prime minister has championed. This is one. The second thing is that, you know, very clear Modi fatigue has set in. Venkat, you know, there are people who would argue technically, you know, BJP and, and NDA Gatbandan got so many numbers and all that kind of a thing. You know, they, they have technically, they have a point. But non-technically, if you want to have a look at it, this is an outright rejection of Narendra Modi as the Prime Minister of India. If, if he refuses to take that message and go quietly and gracefully, well, it's his choice. He, he I mean, uh, uh, but you see, uh, but I, I, I see that very unlikely. He, he would try to, you know, somehow or the other stick on to it. And because, you see, even after the elections were declared, he refused to be, uh, he refused to behave like a um, a caretaker prime minister. He he behaved as though he's, he's still uh, a, a, a prime minister with full mandate and, you know, a prime minister again, anyway, coming back as, as though his coming back was inevitable, you know, foregone conclusion, that kind of a behavior. Um, the entire government, of course. Another takeaway is, I think, uh, uh, political leaders, their hubris is, 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 is punished. Their arrogance is punished. Um, and, you know, wherever, wherever the BJP was able to do a little better, the endorsement is not to their agenda, not to Modi guarantee, not to, you know, Muslim, Mujra, Machli kind of a narrative, but other issues. Another uh, uh, takeaway from this election is a government which has been consistently neglecting the rural distress, price rise, unemployment, um, inequality, um, uh, corruption, especially after the um, electoral bond scheme uh, scam has come out. No, pe people don't tolerate this. They, it is to me, to me, this election is a course correction. A course correction of the Indian polity, which was which was which was about to pivot to either a autocracy or dictatorship or you know um, less tolerant and uh, majoritarian. 
which was about to pivot that way, I think the Indian public have decided to arrest this. That is another takeaway that I that I uh, read from this from this verdict. Well, one of the things which I would like to ask you is that you know many narratives, as you said, there will be a lot of engineering of narratives, like this narrative, this one happened. This is there two or three narratives which you will stick to, and two or three which you will say no, this this is not the way to analyze it, because we will find that somehow people will say, for example, I would want you to do a little bit more, saying that RSS decided BJP should lose. It's as if the people had no mandate and there was a, if I could use the word Mogambo, who controls all of it. I would like you to help us because you also help communication. Uh, how do we, few narratives we should pick, maybe analyze deeper, but few, few we should avoid. And even, even avoiding, we can analyze. But would, would you be able to help with, us with that? Look, what is the narrative? I've, I've given you an idea of what are the takeaways. Yes. So that, that is the narrative. That is the way we have to look at it. It is a, it is a Modi fatigue. It is a rejection of bigotry. It is a rejection of uh, divisiveness. It is a, a rejection of, you know, it's, it's, it's a prevention, very, very conscious intervention by the Indian public to uh, stop the pivoting of Indian Republic towards Hindu Rashtra and majoritarian autocratic kind of a, a path. That trajectory was stopped by them. This is a very powerful intervention that the Indian uh, uh, public have made. To, and it, it really, this election, when, you know, when the pitch was to save this republic, people thought who would understand saving the republic? But they understood it. They understood it in, in their own ways. They may, not, they may not be able to understand uh, the way a, a, a professor understands. Mm -hmm. But... You know, they, they understood, you know, something very simple like Bhai Chara, you know, why should uh, those people be different from our people? You know, th that is that is one. The second thing is, you know, it's very unlikely that the RSS did not want BJP to win. Because you see, why will uh, 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 RSS not have a BJP government in place uh, just on the eve of their sentinel? 2025 is going to be the sentinel. They would like to have a Swayam Sevak as the prime minister. They would like to have a Swayam Sevak as, you know, many ministers and maybe in, in many key positions. So that would have, you know, that would have uh, uh, fulfilled their dream. In 100 years, you know, we could capture the state power and uh, 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 launch India on the path of Hindu Rashtra. That, that so i don't think uh, bjp would re i mean rss would really not want bjp to come back to power i don't i don't buy that at all having said that let me also tell you this election rss or no rss modi or no modi bjp or no bjp election commission or no election commission could not have been saved by anybody because this is a this is a huge rise of the Indian people against this particular narrative. Let us not miss that point. That, that is very key. I think that's a very key point. One of the things which we spoke earlier in one of the coffee conversations with you, you said that this could be a place uh, which could be thought as when we decolonize ourselves, we became independent. We send a signal uh, towards towards the rest of the world that we, we can do that. And in some sense, colonization was some form of corruption. In the same way, we think how the right wing's rise was a form of corruption. And this can be our moment to give a signal. We may not be that close to it. How do you read that, given that we may, it may not be possible for India to form the government? But does this, has we, have we done enough to, to go back and say, we have stopped the right wing, or is it going to give a big signal or we shouldn't worry? This is a good trajectory. We are going. How do you read that? And I wanted to get your opinion on that conversation we had like a few weeks ago. Um, we get two points here. Let me, first point I think is important. Let me make it quickly in just one sentence. I do not rule out the possibility of India Airlines forming the government. Okay. Uh, so let, let's park that aside. Many things can happen, and many things have happened before also. So anything can happen now. That's one. The second thing is, you see, uh, there was uh, some kind of a, 
helplessness and uh, pessimism amongst many people who used to think that, you know, all over the world it is the right which is on the rise. And, you know, India is also a pattern in this. India is one part of it. Um, it's unstoppable. You know, look at uh, uh, Russia, look at, look at Turkey, look at, uh, you know, uh, uh, Central European countries, you know, maybe even uh, a Trump in America. You know, this is a worldwide trend, you know, a lot of uh, right-wing uh, politicians are gaining uh, traction. They're on the rise. They're on the ascendant. You know, this used to be the thing. Then I said, look, uh, when nobody could think of freeing ourselves Anybody, freeing anybody from the colonial yoke, it was India who pioneered that pushback. It was India who first threw away the colonial yoke. So we pioneered then. So I was therefore optimistic, you know, India doesn't fall into the pattern blindly, but it, it has the capability of pushing back a worldwide dominant trend. So like we did it in uh, 1947, it was a huge pushback from us against colonialism. We decolonized. We were the first one to get out of it. Today, we are the pioneers in pushing back the so-called ascendance of the right wing. Now, it, it may not be as complete as you and I would like to have. However, we have served a warning. We have served notice to the right wing that look, don't 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 take it that you know we, we we can take anything lying down. So this this very strong serving of notice to this kind of an agenda, a divisive agenda, a majoritarian agenda, uh, an agenda where one community is roused and told to suppress the other other community. And also told your your problems are because of that community, and you are you are you majority you are under threat, you are your khatre me. You know that kind of a thing is completely rejected. So I see a parallel between forty seven and today, in this particular aspect of the world dominant trend was pushed back then in forty seven the colonial uh, uh, you know dominance, and the pushback started from India. And today, the right-wing ascendancy, that narrative, its pushback started from here in, in India. Yeah. And in many sense, the, whether it's social media, the way we have, the whole movement has captured the entire network. It was difficult to, uh, you, even exit polls were weaponized. I mean, my sister could not sleep that evening and kept on asking if, if I have any good news. I said, I do not have, neither am I a preacher. Uh, we kept joking, we should be astrologers. So that's the state in which people had gone to, and I think we, people are going to breathe freely. I just, before I end the conversation, I wanted to take a little bit of time, and I will include you in that. I found it's amazing and fascinating to see how some of the journalists moved out of the corporate, established media houses, some influencers joined, and they did tremendous amount of work. Uh, and, and that has helped. And the other one is, I would call public influencers. I would call, put people like you or Akar there who are sitting and talking about Akar's book helped consolidate some of my thoughts. Your book allowed me to further uh, analyze the stuff. We got a new voice and you have been on, on it, whether it's yourself or Akar or even I would call social activists, like Tista, et cetera, I've been on it. I, I find it fascinating to step up and do this. Uh, uh, first, I would like you to talk about media because it's not you, so you can give praises. But if I ask the other one, it would be like self patting. So, uh, but I would like you to say something about the media, and then I would like you to say what made you do this, and I would like to end it on that note of hope. Very important uh, aspect, Venkat, uh, uh, in this. You see, uh, look at the newsrooms. The same people in the same uh, newsrooms used to be very secular, talking about secularism, diversity, you know, uh, modern India and modern thoughts, scientific temper and all that kind of a thing. And uh, anyway, uh, suddenly they turned communal. They were pandering to the ruling dispensation. And when they were asked to crawl, when Ben, they were crawling, you know, the, 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 the classic expression of, uh, you know, uh, 1975, 77, those days. Um, 
and you know if india alliance were to form government most of these people if not all most of these people would again reincarnate themselves as secularists they will all be secular yes. in no time yes and their ownership also becomes secular okay that is one therefore i call them you see i i call those people who have uh, as people who have struck a faustian bargain they 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 it's, it's a bargain with they, they've struck struck a bargain with this with the devil they sold their they, they sold their souls you know and for what maybe you know good advertising revenue to make their uh, channels and their uh, businesses uh, flourish or you know uh, uh, to be comfortable or to get some promotions or you know there's so many people they could be academics they could be news people they could be engineers they could be scientists you know all those all those kind of people they just uh, went and uh, prostituted themselves for you know mundane kind of uh, uh, benefits they lost sight of the larger meaning of india larger idea of india this is one the the second thing is i say i don't i i disagree with but i don't blame those people who have been consistently believing that this country should belong to hindus there there is there is there is there is a stream of thought you know you 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 I mean, you, you, you disagree with them but you don't disrespect them because that has been consistently their their point of view and their position but these people who you know they've all become very very communal only for the last 10 years and i'm sure most of them have become non communal again immediately yes. so so this, this is the kind of a situation that we are in and uh, well you know uh, venkat i feel that had the political opposition the parties got their act together this could have been a much much more decisive verdict today it couldn't have been like this but what happened was it is the larger fight was undertaken by the civil society and civil society activists you mentioned some names and there are so many names and people who, whom you do not know also have done a lot of it yes, and and there are, there are people in their small way they've done a lot they've propagated that you know this 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 regime is uh, is against the grain of india against the grain of the constitution um, it is against the values of the constitution this is a huge amount of uh, you see who really countered the uh, narrative of the regime which is very resourceful which has a huge it cell which has huge toll army who countered them parties did not counter it is the civil society which has countered so therefore this election is actually fought by the civil society by the people of india that is the reason why i have been saying that you know this election you know the traditional tools of analyzing an election will break down in this election if you look at one leader versus another leader one party versus another party one alliance versus another alliance you you are bound to go wrong as many people have gone wrong including your uh, you know um, uh, exit polls you know why they, why 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 they got uh, got it so wrong probably their questioning was very wrong actually you know if you if you ask people you know uh, who is the uh, most powerful person in this country prime minister modi they'll say but if you take that as an endorsement you you are bound to get go you are bound to go wrong therefore they therefore they, they, there's a lot of uh, uh, thing in, including those people have gone wrong because they were looking at the wrong places to get the message of the electorate so the when when they looked at the if they if at all they looked at the fight as people of india versus a leader people of india versus a party people of india versus an alliance they would have got the right answer and this is the answer yes. so yeah i i stand corrected i think uh, there are many many people and through edulu and many other places many people have given their time uh, they could have used in other ways they have given their leisure times they have walked it was it was absolutely uh, you know sunny and it was hot but people went and did campaign 
and I think all of them deserve that sense of respect and and should be should be valued and I stand corrected and I think this is and you have maintained this before this is not a traditional election we have to analyze it slightly differently and I think hats off to all of them who put their effort including the journalists including the public intellectuals and all the other people who worked through it in various ways so I, I think I, I I would like to end the note on that but thank you so much you you have participated in a few of the discussions in Edina and it has helped us we, we are hoping to catch up with you very soon again as things shape up, we would like to get your opinion further. But as of today, uh, thank you so much. Good evening, and hopefully, you have a good rest of the evening and a good dinner. Matashto Vishesha video Galanu Nodalu, Matu Hosa video Galabagay Tirialu, Edina.com YouTube channel subscribe Madi, Matu bell icon click Madi.